Good morning, folks, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to the Vicarage for another light bite. It's Trinity Sunday, a major festival. Liturgical colour goes to white, but then from here we go into a long season um, of more than 20 weeks in which the liturgical colour is green, basically, because it isn't anything else. We'll be in that long season till ooh, about the, November. Anyway, Trinity Sunday. We're, so we're thinking about the Trinity. Here's our reading. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. In 1939, Famously, Winston Churchill described Russia as a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. He was describing a puzzling and menacing land which plays by its own rules and constitutes a threat to those around it. We can understand that today. But it's not that that I'm interested in. It's the language he used, a riddle, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. That's a brilliant and apt uh, way of describing our perception of God as a trinity. God, we say, is three in one and one in three, a tri-unity or trinity. It consists of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, each fully eternal and all equal, all of one substance. They are at the same time separate and the same. They're all entirely God. God is entirely each of them. Jesus, at the same time, prays to God and is God. Jesus is God, was begotten by God the Father, and yet is eternal. There was never a time when he didn't exist. The Holy Spirit is not given a personality in the New, Te New Testament, yet he is just as much God as God the Father is, and just as much God as Jesus the Son is. I have one of those little Amazon Alexa machines, you know, artificial intelligence. I asked it to give me the value of pi to a hundred decimal places, and it did that straight away. I asked it to give me the value of pi to a thousand decimal places, and it went through a few and then said, big numbers like this make my head ache, and wouldn't go any further. Um, it's a bit like dealing with the doctrine of the Trinity. The paradoxes make my head ache. There'll be a lot of sermons this weekend, starting with the difficulty of Trinitarian thinking. But as I've said elsewhere this weekend, the doctrine of the Trinity is thoroughly biblical. Not in the sense of the Trinity being named or described, but in the sense of Father, Son and Holy Spirit named together, as in our reading. Or as the Father and the Son, or the Son and the Spirit, or as the Father and the Spirit, being identified as the same thing. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father, said Jesus. And I and the Father are one, said Jesus. There are about 20 of those altogether in a New Testament, put all those texts on a page together, and you begin to get the idea that, yes, the Trinity describes what God is. But it's always paradoxical, the bringing together of things that are incompatible. And, of course, because it's difficult, and because we are all human, Christian preachers and teachers have tried to find pictures or pictures in words to describe the Trinity, to make the doctrine believable. The trouble is, they all fail. 
The most famous of those pictures is probably St. Patrick's shamrock. A shamrock is a type of clover with a stem and three leaves. Patrick thought you could use it to describe God as a trinity, but it falls short. The leaves are separate, and there is a stem which is separate from them. Now that's totally unlike the Trinitarian God. Each of the members of the Trinity is entirely all of them, and all of them are entirely each one. It doesn't work. Or you could use an egg. An egg consists of shell, white, and the yolk, and arguably you could say there are no other parts, so we get rid of the stem problem. For the shell is not the whole egg, and neither is the yolk. The egg is not entirely the, the yolk and the white, or the white or the shell. So it doesn't work. You could do the same thing with an apple, of course, which consists, consists of the peel, the apple, and the pips. Uh, but the same problem is there. Each might be entirely apple, but apple is not entirely each of them. So that doesn't What about ice, water, and steam? Well, ice is, of course, frozen water, and steam is evaporated water. Each of them is entirely water. But, he, but he, again, you get the problem that water is not entirely each of them. I personally think the best one is probably a human one. I'm a son, a grandson, and a dad. I can't point to the bit of me, which is the grandson. Ah, oh, yes, here's my right arm. This is the the grandson, um, uh, and uh, to a different part of me, which is the son, and to another part, which is the dad, all of me is the grandson. All of me is the son. All of me is the dad. But hang on a sec. These are about roles. When are we talking, when we're talking about God, the Trinity, we're talking about essential nature, not roles, not what it does. I don't know if you'll understand that. And you may have to pause this and go back and think over it. I've been a Christian 48 years and involved in formal learning and teaching in one way or another for 45 years of that. And in all that time, I've not come across a single image which effectively describes the Trinity. Because the Trinity is paradoxical. Humanly speaking, God is one. God is three, can't both be true. So, isn't it all just nonsense? Aren't we just wasting our time? Well, no. Actually, there are paradoxes in real life. Um, take this statement, this is a lie. All right, there's a statement, this is a lie. If it's true, then it's false. <laughs> if it's false, then it's true. How can that be? It's hard, isn't it? Or what, what about this? What happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? Will the immovable object be moved or will the irresistible force be stopped? What happens if both are truly uh, irresistible and immovable? What happens then, hey? One of my favourite ones of long ago if you were able to be transported to the very edge of the space and found out that it ended with a brick wall, what would be on the other side of the wall? <laughs> I suppose what I'm getting at is the fact that the Trinity is a par paradox, or if you like, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. That it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's false. It could just expose the limitations of our thinking. We are, after all, talking about the infinite and the eternal God here. Don't worry about it. Just chill. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
let's pray. I'll set the collect for the day and then uh, a short prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And while we're thinking of you, Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, help, help us never to take our Saviour Jesus from the middle of our picture, so that we are, en we are able to trust our present day and our eternity to you. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst us and remain with us and our loved ones, today and always. Amen. Amen.